Here in my garage, just got this new Glass Air 3. But you know what's better than materialistic things? Knowledge. So we just took apart this light combing and cleaned out all the hardware. If we walk over here, I actually have our IO540 crankcase. Uh, we took the whole thing apart, took all the hardware off, got a couple of parts here. And we actually sent the cylinders out for a complete overhaul. So as you see, we have the torque plates on there. Essentially, you wanna, when you remove cylinders, you gotta make sure you have the torque plates on, otherwise you'll get a spun bearing, which isn't fun. But, you know, me and Dennis, who you'll probably meet in the next episode, um, went out and cleaned this up. You know, we used some Simply Green, degreased it out, sanded it out, took off all the old paint. And then uh, we used this enamel paint and it, it really came out really nice. Like, I really like the fire red and, you know, life is too short to paint your engine something boring, I say. So, yeah, I think it came out really nice. And I'm excited to uh, get the cylinders back. Uh, you know, those just got shipped out this Monday. And we're going to see how it turns out. But, yeah. Anyway, so I actually purchased this plane shortly after it had what's called a no shimmy event. Essentially what occurred was, you know, this has a shimmy damper on it. So when you land, if you get any side load, you don't get the shimmy effect. And it either wasn't tightened or it had oil on it. And what happened is, you know, the owner had a perfectly fine landing, but the gear went like this, the gear collapsed, and they ended up having a prop strike. You know, actually the engine that I got here was not the engine that was on there when it got a prop strike. Uh, it was actually pulled off of a Piper. So you know, we got an all new engine mount, an all new nose gear. This was actually the upgraded nose gear. So for those of you who are not aware, uh, Glasser was actually purchased by Advanced Aero, which is an Australian company. Uh, and they made an upgraded version of the nose gear that makes it much less likely to happen. It's the upgraded version of the engine mount, which is a little bit beefier. And you know, the, otherwise the plane is in absolutely great condition. We took the wing off, brought it up here, and you know, we've been doing a little bit of wiring work um, once we got the wing back on. And you know, it has a pretty good stack too. Uh, and all we have left really to do is to get these uh, elevator springs on here. You can see the, you know, we have something supporting the tail right now because it's actually a little bit tail heavy uh, because this engine is not on there as a counterweight. So actually I'm really excited to get started on the gear work uh, because and once I get this gear on here, we can lock it into place after we've tested it and I can install the engine here so we can start working in the, the tail there to, you know, get this plane, um, you know, ready to go. It's, it's actually pretty close to completion. Uh, all I had to do was order a bunch of hardware. So actually what I did was I went through and um, I actually inventoried all of our stuff. So we have, you know, a bunch of parts here, lots of parts, lots of nicks and bobs. And I, you know, organized what we had, but there was a couple things missing and you know i just got the packages just yesterday um, so i'm going to sit down and actually uh, organize these things uh, you know first i'm going to you know, sort of quickly organize some of our engine hardware um, this is all the stuff that went to the io540 but man i'm really excited about this project that you know i've been working on it for a couple months now and uh, you know i'm excited to show you guys what we've been up to you know it's going to be a screamer once it's done it's about 300 horsepower in that io540 you know this thing cruises at almost like 230 240 knots which is close to uh, 300 miles per hour so i'm super excited to work on this project it's been a blast so far you know again it's been a couple months but a lot of it's just been waiting for hardware so I'm really excited to actually get the hardware to get started. And uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and start organizing some of this, these bits and bobs. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start working on the gear right after. Uh, so I'm gonna have enough daylight left in the day. Finally got all this organized. And now we can actually start the real work. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this gear off. I need to replace these clevis pins because they were old and I just used them sort of as a placeholder to test for fitment. And then we're gonna remove this. We're gonna get these properly aligned where they need to be. 
and then we can actually start working on this gear. I'm gonna whip out the book and we're just gonna start going step by step through it and you can follow along. This part, I actually made it myself. Um, you know, these weren't really in sock anywhere. So I had it milled out of, you know, aerospace stainless steel. And but what we can do now is, the whole reason I took this off really is, you see how here this attaches here? Well, there's supposed to be washers here. Okay, so I finished, it took me a little bit longer to get it like perfectly aligned, but I ended up using two 716Ls here on this side and then none on this side. So you know, I would have liked to put one there, but you know, it's fine. Even if it doesn't have one there, you know, it fits all properly now and all that fun stuff. And so now we can start taking a look at our uh, build guide, seeing if we can see anything here uh, for what we can work on next. So this isn't applicable to our build. So what we can start to do Let's probably look at the drag links. So it'll tell us the part for the drag link. We'll, we'll go ahead and grab it and then start trying to fit it on here. We'll grab the 325 castle nut, the cotter pin, and the uh, clavis bolt, which we have over there. I'll go ahead and grab it. Well, remember how I said uh, I had ordered everything that I needed to do and organized it? That was a lie because, well, I actually forgot to order some clavis bolts. So there's a special kind of bolt here that's specifically used uh, in the drag brace for the nose gear, which is the first step we were just looking at. And it's really good for shear loads, not for tension loads. And it's a very specialized bolt. And I actually do have every other piece of hardware that I will never ever need for finishing this nose gear. But of course, um, this didn't come with the, the clevis bolts that I needed and uh, I have to order it. So I just ordered it. It's probably gonna be another three to five days. I mean, that's just really honestly how it goes in aviation. You know, once I get those on, um, you know, these are brand, brand new links. I have a bunch of other brand new parts that are going to go on here. There's the old one. This is the new one. Uh, and then once this goes on here, this goes on actually right here. From my understanding right here, hooks onto this gear and make sure that it's, you know, going where it needs. Um, yeah, right here. I'll show you. I'll show you where it goes. And yeah, it's getting already a little bit late. So I'm probably going to call it a day pretty soon now that I've started on that once we get our part in uh, and also probably for those parts there's a couple things i need so probably tomorrow or the day after when i come in here this is the accessory case for the crank uh so this we sort of stripped it as much as we could the paint is uh and then there is color governor which is sitting around here somewhere i finished stripping that and i'm gonna go ahead and paint it and then maybe we might uh um, paint a few other things strips like the oil pan we're gonna strip the paint off of that right here there's a couple of like exhaust and intake things we might want to uh, paint it just so it looks nice uh, but yeah i'll check back with you guys um you know it would have been nice to start on the gear work today but honestly this is just how it goes you know, there's been lots of times where i went to go do something and well, i'm missing one essential part even though i have all you know all the other 500 parts or whatever it is uh if you're just missing that one thing you know and you can't start the process you know get this specifically this clevis bolt that i don't have doesn't matter if i have all this stuff for this i need to be able to get that so we're just going to wait for it to arrive and then we'll actually hopefully get started on some work after that mm -hmm. 